Howdy folks. So I've recently come across this thing. This is a Naztec uh, PS2D power supply. And uh, this thing is not uh, sort of your, your average power supply. First of all, it looks uh, very retro -y, very kind of 60s, 70s-ish era. Uh, power supply, but no, this actually was made uh, just seven years ago. So this is not uh, this is not actually that old. Uh, what makes this power supply interesting? Because I know there's going to be people to go, oh, it's just a power supply. What makes this interesting, at least to me, is that this is actually from a uh, traffic light control system. So uh, Naztec, uh, they make basically the systems which control uh, traffic lights at intersections, and so this power supply would connect to a backplane with a bunch of controller cards that would go in that sort of that cabinet that sits off to the side of the intersection and actually controls the signaling lights. So this is a sort of a very specialized, uh, likely very expensive uh, piece of equipment. There's, there's nothing on any of the sides, by the way. It's just got rubber feet on the bottom and everything's all in the front, of course, because this is going to be in a cabinet. So everything's going to come in from the front. And so I just wanted to, to sort of take a look inside here and see, uh, you know, what the what the build uh, quality is like. Of course, we expect it to be very high, and uh, what the construction is like. And uh, the reason why I think this is very expensive is because I remember reading uh, a while back that intersections are like tens of thousands of dollars to put traffic lights in, maybe even uh, you know closer to a hundred thousand dollars to put a, a traffic light at an intersection. And I, you know that sounds kind of outrageous, but Apparently, and I mean, this makes sense, you know, you might think, oh, well, I can just use a, an Arduino or some, you know, Raspberry Pi or something, and I could put in a traffic light for a hundred bucks. And, you know, you could do that, but there's liability involved. And, you know, if, if the person who's installing the system or the company installing the system is liable for, you know, if it malfunctions and someone crashes into someone else and dies, you know, if, if you're liable for that, you're going to pay for equipment that you trust and that you understand and that's been used for a while. And so... Uh, I'm assuming that companies like this probably make most of their money based on that kind of stuff. And so I expect this to be, uh, you know, probably very simple but well designed. Um, and, you know, it's probably an old design, you know, given the case style of this, even though it was made in 2010, I, I suspect this is probably much older than that. So uh, it's actually a relatively beefy unit. Uh, we've got 24 volts at 2 amps, 12 volts at 5 amps, of course, both, both DC. And we have a little uh, quarter amp uh, 12 volt AC output. And uh, we have this line ref light. Uh, and uh, basically, I, 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 what I believe this is, is it's probably a pulse that comes out of this uh, big military style circular connector uh, with the, the line. So with the 60 hertz line, uh, you get like a pulse out. And so maybe you could use that for clocking something or for timing something. Um, that would be my guess. These things look like adjustments, but they're actually not. These are actually just fuses. So there's an, indiv there's an individual fuse uh, for each of the outputs. And of course, these would be uh, the ratings on uh, the unit. And then of course, there's one uh, for the mains. And the mains actually comes in on this big circular connector. And I actually do have the wiring loom for this. So of course, this is your uh, military style connector um, with earth on it. It's uh, very nicely sleeved, kind of like what you'd see on your uh, computer power supplies these days. And uh, it's got some outputs, which I don't entirely know what they do. Um, it does have uh, sort of your standard, um, you know, live neutral and ground, which uh, I've just got a uh, standard uh, mains socket on. It also has some terminated uh, something. Uh, I don't know what these are. These might be control lines. Um, I, I'm not quite sure. And then there's this connector, which also comes out of it, and I don't know what this does either. So I suspect maybe this is what the uh, line reference comes out of, and maybe these are enable lines or, or, or monitoring or power good or something. I don't really know. I don't have any data on this. So uh, I don't ex entirely know what it does, but I plugged it in, and you do get the outputs out the front. So enough rambling. Let's open her up and see what is on the inside. Okay, so with all the screws out, we'll lift it off. And so it's a multi-board construction. Um, okay. Holy crap, that's a big capacitor right there. That says 1,800 microfarads at 250 volts. That's a big capacitor down there. Really big. And then we've got 
um, you know, sort of your standard sort of main tank caps here, 330 mic on each of these boards. So, so yeah, so we've got 12 volt adjust, 24 volt adjust. So this would be your 12 volt DC, this would be your 24 volt DC, and I suspect that 12, uh, the 24 volt AC comes out of uh, this, or sorry, the 12 volt AC comes out of this board here. Okay, so I think the best way to uh, take a look at this is to pull out each of these boards. So this first board here, I mean, first of all, like, look at these kinds of connectors. I mean, that's, I have not, can't say I've seen that connector before, but it uh, definitely looks fancy. This is our 24 volt AC board here. And so we've got uh, all, all Nichicon capacitors. Um, these are 105 degrees C rated. The main one is 85, but that makes sense. These ones are, you know, very low rate of failure. So on this big heatsink here, we have, um, that looks like a all-in-one switch mode controller. Um, that's not a transistor. Uh, yeah, it's marked U2 on the board. So that's uh, an all-in-one ST part, which does all the switching, our little switching transformer. And then we've got a diode on, an, on the heatsink there. Our, uh, you know, our filtering on this side. Uh, sort of Dale power resistor here very beefy ass diode right there and you know I mean it's super simple um, it's 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 very simple but it's uh, it, it it's got a very nice board the board feels very nice um, very nice indeed and uh, like look at the way they've done the mounting they've got threaded metal blocks that are riveted into the board um, it's a very very rigid very sturdy assembly like this is actually like a really nice board. Um, you can't flex that at all. Even, so even though it's probably only two layers, um, you know, this isn't cheap phenolic or anything like that. This is a proper board. Yeah, see, so look at that. There's a 2002 copyright date on this. So this is, you know, definitely an old, an old uh, design. So this would probably have, may have even been designed in the late 90s. Um, and maybe this is just a Rev, Rev C. So I suspect, you know, this is probably, you know, probably a 20 year old design. And I suspect that there's probably quite a number of these that are probably still in operation uh, around uh, probably uh, the United States and Canada, likely. And so uh, it's, it'll be interesting to see what, uh, what, the tw uh, what the difference between the 12 and the 24 volt boards are, because they look completely different. Um, but I don't know why the design would be so different. So let's pull out the 12 volt board. Okay, so the 12 volt board here, um, it looks very similar to the 24 volt board with some minor differences. So if I just bring you down a little bit here, uh, you can see there are a couple things that are different. Um, you know, the resistors over here by the adjustment are different. This one has two caps, this one has only one, but it does actually have room for another. Um, you also notice the copyright dates, uh, 2003 and 2002. So this is actually a newer board. Um, and they, they do actually have different part numbers. Um, this is a PC, P, this is Rev B, this is Rev C. So they are actually different, different uh, assembly numbers. And the Rev B board is newer than the Rev C board, which is quite interesting. Also, even the even the mounting holes are in different spots. It's quite interesting. It's quite interesting the way they've done this. Um, this resistor is a different value, different type. But all of the rest of this stuff um, looks very much the same. Um, you know, maybe the brand of the cap is different, the type of the cap is different, but the board layout is very similar. Um, so, of course, it's just going to be component value changes in order to get it to output a different voltage because likely this switching controller, um, which appears to be the same part on both, just, you know, you can just, you can just program its output. It just has a, some sort of reference that's some adjustable reference, and that's it. And so probably the, uh, the, the current difference uh, is just the power limit of what you can dissipate uh, on these heat sinks. Interesting. But, I mean, it's, again, still very, very good quality. Uh, board. It looks a little bit worse 
than this board. Definitely this is a much nicer board than this one, but uh, still, still not bad, definitely not bad. And so then we've got the main board in here, which I'm going to try and not take it out of here. Let's just uh, take a look at it while it's in the case here. So of course these are the connectors that go to the other, other two boards. They just have some giant connector down here. And uh, the uh, circular connector also comes into this board. And so, we, of course, we've got our, our banana terminals over here, our banana jacks. And, uh, of course, those are the outputs. And uh, we have some, this looks, looks like uh, 4000 series CMOS. Likely, this is probably going to be doing detection of the line uh, frequency, giving it that, uh, that pulse output, plus any control lines that come in through this connector. Um, would be going through that. Some very big 10-watt uh, uh, Dale power resistors there. Um, not sure what those would be used for, possibly putting a minimum load on the system. Uh, I'm not quite sure. Um, this would be our transformer for likely the 12-volt uh, 12, 12 uh, AC output, which, of course, that has to come from this board. Our big, big-ass uh, mains input. Uh, cap here, we've got a common mode choke, uh, EMI suppression, there is a standard uh, four pin bridge rectifier package right there. And then we've got some really, really fat chunky mobs here, uh, sort of as you'd expect. This board is uh, also copyright 2003. This is a Rev D board, again, different uh, number as we would expect. Okay, so I've got the unit back together and uh, I'll just stick this giant mains connector on here. Okay, so with that uh, plugged in, let's uh, switch the power on. And uh, so we have these uh, red lights which come on, probably telling us each of the supplies is active and probably within maybe some tolerance value. And you can see we've got this line ref light which is flashing and uh, looks like that's flashing once per second, so it's probably counting of course, it's designed for uh, 60 hertz. It's probably counting 60 pulses and then switching that light. So if you probably look at this, um, it is probably almost uh, exactly uh, once per second. And uh, I've got this plugged into my uh, my kilowatt meter here. And uh, so it's drawing 6.4 watts with no load. So, and uh, the VA 14.8. 15 VA, so its power factor is 0.43 without any load on it. Now, of course, it has no load, so um, that's kind of expected. Pretty much all switch mode power supplies are completely shit uh, with power factor without any load on them. And uh, I don't really have a really big uh, dummy load to put on this thing right now, so I'm just going to uh, leave it at that. I think you can uh, believe me that it works. And uh, one thing that is nice is, of course, that's got that giant... Uh, cap in it. So if I if I disconnect uh, the the mains inputs, if I just uh, switch this off, you can uh, see for how long uh, it continues to go for. Of course, you can see the line ref stops flashing, and then it all fades out. So um, yeah, it uh, it goes for quite a while off uh, that big cap. So anyway, I think that uh, that fully wraps this thing up. Uh, and uh, as always, thanks for watching.